Hey YouTube, Satoshi Matrix here yet again bringing you another video. Well, it's official. It's been five years since I've been on YouTube and this is my 100th video. So for all my new subscribers and all of the people who support my channel, I want to say thank you very much. Here is yet another product review. So this time I'm focusing on the retro, uh, retro bit retro port adapter. What this cool little device allows you to do is plug and play original NES games onto any Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, or Super Famicom clone. So, as you can notice with the cartridge, it's shaped like a Super Famicom cartridge, yet has the divots for the um, North American SNES. So this means that this will play um, on any North American system, the Japanese systems, or even the PAL systems. Um, so this simply plugs in the top. And then you take your NES game, in this case, DuckTales, I'm going to simply plug it into the top. As you can see, it fits right in, goes no, no problem. Um, and then you take this cord, which is a RCA um, to 3.5 uh, stereo mil or 3.5 millimeter stereo um, RCA jack, and this gets plugged into the side of the unit. So when you're plugging this in, you're not actually using the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom power or AV set. You're actually using its own AV set, and the reason for that is because the cartridge port, although it powers the um, the adapter, um, it doesn't actually provide any video. There's no video out pins in the Super Nintendo cartridge port, so it's actually impossible um, for you to do things that way. So this way allows you to plug in um, a, a fairly good composite video cord as well as dual mono um, RCA cords so you get both um, both the left channel and the right channel. It's still mono because the NES was, not, was never a stereo system, but nevertheless it does sound nice because um, you have both channels. So let's turn on the TV and let's see what we got. And, of course, this allows you to use the Super Nintendo controller slash Super Famicom controller to play your original NES games. go to the moon because everyone loves this theme. So when you're going to take the game out, simply grab on it with one hand and pull on it and pull it out. As you can see, the game's come out no problem. Very easy. It does not have the uh, grip of death like a lot of other clones. Let's try The Legend of Zelda. Very famous game. And it's a good test for clones because a lot of clones don't like um, the MMC1 plugged in um, games like Zelda. Let's see what we got. And as you can see... It's running perfectly. So once again, as you can see, the game runs perfectly. Oh, I'm not playing very well, but you get the point. It's Zelda on Super Nintendo. 
Now, one thing I should mention is when you're going to play um, these kind of games that have batteries, make sure you, when you're going to turn it off, always hold in the reset button and then turn it off. But that's just simple NES etiquette. So, um, what I should mention is, for whatever reason, Retrobit, when they designed the Retroport, decided to map the NES B and A buttons to the SNES B and A buttons. This is odd because um, when Nintendo designed the Super, Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom, um, they originally planned to have backwards compatibility in, with, built into the system, and um, the controllers actually use the same control chip, the 4021. And when you're plugging in um, a NES game into um, in, into other adapt and other clones, usually the Y and B buttons are used as the two action buttons. So it's really odd that the B and A buttons are used. But again, this doesn't let, let any confusion because any game that says like press the A button, you're not accidentally pressing the B button because that would be the A button in the Y B configuration. Um, a little confusing, but using these two buttons is a little annoying. But y you'll get used to it. There's no problem. All right, so let's try another game. Let's try Mega Man 3. Plug in Mega Man 3. Again, just plugs in right into the top. Hit power. And it boots right up. First time, as long as the cartridge is clean. Alright, let's, uh, let's go to Mega Man stage. Yeah, the controls. The Y button and X buttons don't do anything. The B button is the, the NES B button, and the A button is the NES A button. The D-pad works, of course, just as it normally would. The select button is the NES select, start is start, and that's it. The shoulder buttons don't do anything, but other than that... The colors look remarkably good um, for a clone system. This is actually really, really quite good. I died, but yeah. Anyway, there's Mega Man 3. Pull that out. How about Super Mario Brothers? Because everyone wants to know Super Mario Brothers. Well, does Super Mario Brothers work on this clone? Of course, it does. So, as I before I play Mario Brothers, um, I should mention that this thing. Um, it's NOAC is actually pretty good. Um, the NOAC on this will support almost all of the NES library. There are a few games that unfortunately do not work, and those games, you know, are the typical common ones like Castlevania 3. Um, Castlevania 3 unfortunately does not run on on this um, on this clone, along with um, other MMC5 games. Um, I'll post an annotation right here for a complete list of games that I know that do not work. Um, Okay, so there's the list, and as I go on, I should mention that uh, this thing has certain issues with some games with its audio. Super Mario Brothers is a game that uh, typically um, gets screwed up for game or for clones that have bad um, duty cycles and have the reverse duty cycle problem. So fortunately, the retro port does not have this problem, but there are still some residual sounds and that don't sound quite right. Um, like a few other clones, uh, the retro port here uh, has uh, over-amplified um, sound outputs, so it sounds a little bit distorted on certain games. It's not too bad, but it is worth mentioning, so here's what I mean. It's only present on certain tunes, although it's present in the overworld theme, the underworld theme sounds exactly like it should.
So, one last game I want to show you guys. That's Mario 3. Because if you buy this adapter, chances are you'll want to play Mario 3 on this. So, I gotta make sure it's clean. Let's give it a light blow. And there we go. Super Mario Brothers 3. how well my camera will pick this up, but while the colors are very good on this clone, it does not produce whites very well. This is actually a charcoal color more than a, just a pure white. Um, if that's appearing white on YouTube, it's just because of compression or something, but in reality, I'm looking at this just, you know, with my own eyes, I can see this is not white as it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be um, just pure white. It's, it's actually like a charcoal color. Same thing with this cloud in the corner. So, other than that, the colors are very good. The video output, um, the brightness, um, everything is everything is right except for the whites. The whites are not quite white. It's uh, it's a little bit of a weird annoyance, but eh, what are you gonna do? All right. So as you can see, NES games work perfectly. Um, you can also use Famicom games in it if you plug in a North American um, or, or a Famicom to NES adapter. So all you have to do is like, you know, plug in, you know, and play, you know, a Japanese Famicom game or in this case, a multi-cart. Um, and those work perfectly as long as the games um, are not among the games I just listed that uh, are incompatible. Um, as well as games that use uh, expansion audio such as Akamajo Densetsu, the Japanese version of Castlevania 3. Um, it will play it, but it will not play the expansion audio. You'll only get the 2A03 uh, normal output um, that you would get um, from a North American system. So, unfortunately, the system, there, this retro port um, won't play all the games, but it will play the vast majority of them. Now, you're probably asking yourself, where can you get one of these? Um, you can actually buy these from a site that's called DOSCheap.com, and I'll provide a link to um, to the storefront, and you can, you can just buy it there. Um, it's the cheapest place to buy it online. Um, and the question then is, should you buy one of these if you already have a, another Super Nintendo or another Nintendo or Nint Nintendo clone? Well. The thing about this is this plugs right into the Super Nintendo. It doesn't need an additional power supply. It just gets the power right from the pins, of the 5-volt pins um, in the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom. Um, as you can see, it's super small. The games boot right away, as soon as, assuming they're clean, that you don't have to worry about, um, ab about like old hardware, failing hardware. And... The great thing about it is it's just fun to, you know, play NES games on the more advanced system and using a real controller, a real Super Nintendo controller, Super Famicom controller in this case, because in a lot of cases the D-pad is superior to what you'd find on an NES or NES clone. Using the B and A buttons of a Super Nintendo controller might not be as comfortable as using the Y and B buttons, but you'll quickly get quickly adapt to that, so that's not a huge issue. As well, you can use um, Super Nintendo arcade sticks or whatever controller that you want. Um, now, it should go without mention, but uh, you won't be able to play games like Duck Hunt or uh, any games that used uh, the Zapper or use other accessories like the U Force or, um, God forbid, the Power Glove. Um, but you know, th that's that's a minor gripe considering that you're beginning to be able to play, um, that you're going to be able to vastly expand your um, Super Nintendo library by plugging in original cartridges as well. So using this, you can use the re reliability of the original hardware. Um, you don't have to get in in, 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 in any um, cheap clones, or you don't have to worry about um, about anything like that. But uh, the retro port overall, I have to give it a big thumbs up. This is a good product, um, and the, the uh, this will work, like I said, on any system worldwide. So you don't have to worry about um, incompatibility for wherever you are. This will play um, PAL games as well, I should say, um, but PAL games will run um, a little bit 
a little bit faster than they should because that had a different processor um, clock speed than the North American system at a slower clock speed, I should say. So overall, is this a good buy? I would say it is. So anyway, this is uh, Satoshi Matrix, so signing out. Thanks for watching, guys. Check it out. Retroport. Mario 3. Super Famicom. Awesome.